Hello and welcome to Zero to Hero in Fusion 360. I'm Abhigyan and today the aim is to basically design a pencil that looks something like this in Fusion 360. Right? So without any further ado, let's get started right away. Right? So right now I'm in Fusion 360 and I'm going to start by creating a sketch that is the hexagonal profile of this particular pencil. So I'm going to say create sketch and I'm going to choose this plane because I'm in the top view right now. This is going to be my main plane. And so yeah, now I'm going to create a polygon here, which is going to be a hexagon here in this case. So we're going to go and select polygon. We can either choose a circumscribed polygon or an inscribed polygon. And I'm going to choose circumscribed first and then I'm going to start by choosing your center point. And then you can basically type the, um, you can just start typing and you can just say 5 mm and that's going to set it to 5 millimeters. And I think pencils would normally have a radius of, I mean, a diameter of about 5 millimeters, but really they're, they're kind of small. So 5 millimeters is a sufficiently large size for a pencil. So I'm going to hit enter. And also you can change the number of sides of the polygon. Right now it's already been set to 6. So that's all right. We're going to stick with that and hit enter. Right, so that's going to create the hexagon for us. Now we're going to extrude this to create the body of the entire pencil. Now we're already in top view, so we can't really see the arrow and that is the direction in which it's going to extrude. So just use the gizmo or if you have a mouse, you can hit shift and the middle mouse button. And I'm going to set the height of this to about maybe three, four centimeters so that it looks similar to the image uh, that we have used as our reference. Right. Yeah. So it looks about the same. Now, the next thing to do would be to create this particular circular profile up here uh, to form the bottom part of the tip. And then we're going to join this hexagon shaped uh, profile to the circular shape profile by using a loft. Right. So for this, we would first need to create a circle at a slight height above this main body of the pencil. And for that, we're going to be using the offset plane tool. All right, and I'm going to choose that as a starting point. That is the starting height at which uh, I want my offset plane and then set this distance to about uh, one centimeter maybe. Yeah, that looks about right. You can make it even longer if you want your pencil to look like it's been sharpened more. And if you want your pencil to look like it's a little bit more blunt, then you can just make this smaller. So like 0.7 centimeters would make it look like that. And you can you can probably imagine how the pencil is going to look uh, if we were to basically construct some kind of a pyramid based on that hexagon, which tapers to that point. So yeah, I'm going to set that to one centimeter and voila, right? So now I'm going to select that particular a plane as my new plane for my sketch that is a circle which i'm going to draw on it all right and the centers line up perfectly which is which is required in this case since we want a completely concentric design and yeah and this the legs radius or diameter in this case would be about 0.2 centimeters i guess that would look about right so i'm going to hit enter and that's going to create the circle for me now, if I just use the gizmo, you will see that this has been constructed at that height, at the height of one centimeter above the body of that pencil, exactly as we wanted. And now we're going to create the loft to join between the hexagon uh, over here to the circle over here. All right. So we go back to solid and we select create loft. Then we choose the two uh, profiles between which we want to loft. We'll select this. And then we'll select this, all right? So now there's one, I mean, uh, uh, something that can happen is we can click, if we just click this point without being very careful, it actually creates a hexagon based pyramid, which tapers to that point. We don't want that. So if you've made this mistake, you can just click cross over here and uh, instead zoom in and be careful and select the actual circle this time, all right? That will give you what we actually wanted, right? And then hit okay. You can also just directly end in a tapering point if you want it to look like there's a single tip which starts from here and ends in the tip itself. But we're actually going to apply materials to each of them and, and individual materials to each of them. So this method would be slightly easier for that purpose. Now we're again going to construct an offset plane so that we can create the tip of the pencil now. Starting from here, again we set the height to 0.1 centimeter maybe or maybe 0.2. 0.2 looks alright. 
point three also would be fine. I'll just go with point two. And again, create a sketch. This time, we just want to create a tiny point at the center, right? So we can just click a point, and that actually does create a point. And if you use the gizmo, you will be able to see that point. But that's not really enough. We need some sort of a profile to which we can actually uh, loft between. So for that, we need to create a circle of really, really small diameter, right? So we're going to say center diameter circle, and again go to top view so that we are exactly at. We know we are exactly at the center. Choose that, and then type a really small value for the radius. I'm going to use 0.0001, uh, maybe another 01 just for good measure, centimeters, right? So yeah, that's going to come as 10 to the power of minus 4 centimeters, and that's really tiny. You really won't be able to see it unless you you really really zoom in. Zooming in can be done via the scroll wheel of your mouse or via this zoom tool. You just have to click that, and then you can. Click and drag, and it will allow you to zoom in, right? As you zoom in further and further, you will probably be able to see the actual circle's profile. But we're not going to go that close because there is a lot more to be done, really. So, yeah. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a loft, right? Go back to solid and hit create loft. Start from this profile and end at that point. This time. Even if we end in sharp, it's totally fine because that's exactly what we want, really. But in fact, you can also end in that circular profile if you properly zoom in and select that. But we're not going to bother with that right now. We can just leave it as it is and uh, allow it to uh, end in a sharp point. All right. So hit OK, and that will enable you to get this pencil tip. All right. Now, moving to the bottom of this pencil, we want. This metal casing for the eraser and the eraser itself. So now go to your bottom view, rotate this downwards, and then hit bottom. And if you want to rotate it, go ahead and do that. Right. One piece of advice: it would be really, really helpful if you have a real mouse rather than using your laptop's touchpad because that makes the entire work a lot easier compared to using a touchpad and actually doing all of these things. But That being said, though it's totally possible to do it. Now again, we're going to create a sketch starting, I mean, on this particular hexagon surface. Now we're going to draw a circle so as to form that that cylindrical parts profile. All right, so yeah, center diameter circle. Select that, and you can go to a uh, 1.115 centimeter, or just hit 1.2 centimeter. That would also be fine. And then that's that's done. So then say finish sketch and back in solid view. Extrude, right? So now a slight problem may arise. That is, when you hit extrude and you select this, and you try to extrude, what will happen is you will be extruding that part, excluding the hexagon. So that would result in this kind of a shape with a hexagon-shaped cavity. Instead of that, just hit Control Z if you have made any mistakes, and hit E again if you want to extrude. Select that as well as this hexagon. Just click on both of them one by one, and that will enable you to. um extrude them both together all right and now uh, i'm going to zoom out so that i can see the entire pencil when i'm extruding this so as to get a better idea all right so i think 0.5 cm looks all right and then i'm going to hit enter all right next is to make the eraser which is going to follow a similar procedure again again look from the bottom hit create sketch select that surface as your sketching surface And create a circle. This time we want it to be slightly smaller. So we had used 1.2 last time. This time 1.1 would be would be fine, or even one would be fine. I'm just going to use one. And now again extrude this, right? So go back to solid and hit extrude. Choose that profile, and this time you will notice that only the inner profile will be extruded, right? So we're going to extrude that out to about 0.4 centimeters, maybe 0.3. 0.3 looks. Looks fine, and so this is our pencil. Maybe extrude it slightly more because we want it to look similar to that. And honestly, you can play around with these dimensions. It's completely in your hands. I just want it to look similar to the image that I have here for reference. Yours, yours could be totally different. Now, this is our completed pencil, but it doesn't have the colors as you may have noticed. So just hit A for appearance. Alternatively, if you want to find it in the menu, you have to go to modify. And hit appearance over here, and that will open up the same tab, right? 
and now we want to basically apply different materials to the different parts of this pencil right so for that there are actually a couple of different ways all you have to do is actually just drag and drop the right materials and it will basically apply the right coloring to the right places now i want to apply a yellow colored uh, gloss paint onto the main part of the pencil and if i drag that and drop it it will actually color the entire pencil yellow and that's not what we have in mind so i'll hit ctrl z or two times you need you need to click, click that because once it's going to close the appearance and the next time it's going to actually turn that off so yeah hit a again to open up the appearance window this time just to apply it onto specific faces select those faces by clicking on them one at a time this is where it really helps to have a mouse because you can just rotate without actually having to click on the gizmo multiple times and move your mouse around right and then now that we've selected all of these faces go to the pane that you want that's yellow and drop it that will color only the faces that you had selected right next things would be to color the top part with wooden um, appearance i mean to give it a wooden appearance so select those six faces and then go to wood and I'm going to choose oak because I mean might as well so yeah that's going to make it that color and yeah next would be the tip so for that I'm going to use carbon fiber because there isn't really a graphite and I think carbon fiber is the closest equivalent to that so yeah now select that first and drag and drop the carbon fiber to it it kind of looks like a pencils lead if you ask me but that's just my opinion next is yeah now the main material which is used in all your designs by default is this one it's called steel satin and i think we can go with that for the for the metal casing because it's it, it kind of looks metallic anyway and then for the bottom part, we're going to choose a pink colored paint because there isn't a pink colored rubber for some reason. And we can indeed download some, but I mean, we might as well just use what's available to us directly. So go to paint. And this time I'll go with a powder coat rough and choose this red and drag it. Oh, I forgot to select the surface. So just select them both and then drag it and drop it. Right, so that's going to paint that red, right? And as you can see, it has some texture to it. And in fact, so do the others. But since we've chosen glossy ones for the others, they won't really show up as much as this does. All right, so that is our pencil. Now, if you want to make this, uh, I mean, if you want to make it look really good, or you can actually render this out and it'll, it'll make it appear a lot more realistic than what it currently looks like. So just go to the design tab. I mean, go to that, which says design and then click render. And that should actually give you a much more realistic looking view of your pencil. If you don't like the angle at which it's being shown, just use your mouse and drag and drop or, or just use the gizmo that works exactly the same way. You can even get shadows. And in fact, there is an artificial light source in the, um, in the environment. You can actually turn it off or you can leave it on as you wish. I'm just going to take a simple render right now and what what render really does is it basically calculates the path of light rays if they were to strike this object and get and get bounced off so you can just turn that on and it's going to start rendering that's in canvas render that is it's going to render the entire image within this canvas itself and there's also another external render which will just render that to an external image all right so yeah that's going to be your first render for fusion 360 and you can render much cooler models in the future hopefully this is just the beginning all right and in fact as you can see here it's going to start rendering and it's going to stop at excellent you can actually request it to go further to final and then even in finite yeah that that does that all right so yeah thank you guys for watching i hope you've learned something really cool if you have any doubts be feel free to ask them in the comments and if you've really enjoyed the video consider liking and subscribing to this channel and we hope to see you in the next video peace